In this video, we're going to take our reverse engineered Fiat fender and we're going to make it wider. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in this video, which is going to be the last video in this series, we are going to talk about fender modifications. Now, there's a couple things that I want to talk about here. One is ways that we can copy form data, and the other one is way that we can just sort of edit. So this is obviously not a complete fender. There's more that we could do here, but we did a pretty good job of replicating the Fiat scan. So what I wanna do now is I wanna make this thing wider, right? Cause it's, it's for a race car. It's going to have more wheel and tire underneath it. So why not make it a little bit wider? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify the form. And as always, you can go to the description of the video and you can download the data set to get started. Now, when we're looking at this, you'll notice a couple things. One, there's this sort of ghosted image underneath. And what that actually is, is the original converted body. So when we get started in a forms design and we do all the forms work, we don't really see that until we convert it to a solid body. So a way that we can get rid of that is go back to the Fusion Design workspace and simply just hide that solid or surface body. Then when we go in to edit the form, we don't see it anymore. Now most of the time it's okay, and especially if we're making a design wider, it's usually fine. But if we're gonna sort of push any of the fender elements in, we wanna make sure to completely get rid of that. So the next thing that we wanna talk about is how we can copy data that's already here. Now in some of the other videos, we've talked about using direct modeling where we don't actually capture any history. And when we do that under utilities, we have the convert option that allows us to pick when we're converting our form body to a solid or a surface. Now there are some benefits to that because it does allow us to do things like decide when we wanna keep edges. Now when we're using that option and we're not actually capturing history, the surfaces and the form body sort of live at the same time. Now it, it's true as well when we're capturing design history, but where forms modeling is contextual, which means that we're sort of in this direct modeling phase and we don't have access to our solid and our surface tools. So it's a little bit different when we have history capture on, but when we have it off, it adds an extra level of control that we can have. We're not gonna be doing that in this video, but what I do wanna talk about is a way that we can copy the data. So let's say that you recreated this fender or any other fender and you were going to make it, but you also wanted to make an over fender or you wanted to make another element of it or potentially just have this as an unmodified version. So we can select the body inside of our bodies folder. We can right click and we can copy this. Once we copy it, all we need to do is right click the top level and select paste. When we paste, we can leave it exactly where it is, or we can move the entire thing out. So you'll notice when I move the entire thing out, we just essentially made a perfect copy of this. Now, this is great because now we can continue to work on this just as we did when we created the original design. We can go back and forth into box and smooth display, and we just simply have a copy. Another thing that we can do instead of copying the entire design is copy certain elements of the design. So in order to do this, I'm gonna change my selection to a freeform selection, and I'm just gonna pick up on some of the faces. So I'm gonna sort of take this, work my way around up into here, and come back down. And then I'm gonna use Control and C on the keyboard, or Control and V if you're on, a, um, I'm sorry, Command and C if you're on a Mac. And then I'm going to paste that. You can also use your right click and copy and paste. You have options to use move copy, which allows you to copy certain elements. And again, th what this allows us to do is pick certain parts of the design and copy and paste those elements. So again, you can see that if I just copy and paste certain bits of it, uh, essentially what I did was I just built out a second little piece. Now, why is this sort of workflow important? Well, essentially this is important because now we have an exact replica of that portion of the design. So say you wanted to work on modeling a, a piece that is going to be, let's say an intake scoop or something that fits in that part of the fender. Well, now we can go to modify and subdivide. We can select all of these faces holding down control or command. We can use exact, which means that exact is gonna keep the exact same shape. And then we can subdivide this and we can continue to modify it. 
Now, then we can add a little bit of detail. Say we needed to pull some elements out. We can use modify and begin manipulating this. And then we can select that entire body and we can use move and we can put it back on the fender. And then we can have this sort of section that is bumped out a little bit more. Again, not a, not a super great example, but it is another way in which we can copy design elements. But what you're really here for is how to make this thing wider, how to make it a wide body. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can do this, and you have to kind of think about the style of the vehicle that you're working on. So in this case, I really like this classic fender arch look. And if we wanna just go a little bit wider, half inch, maybe an inch, just pulling the geometry out that we have is probably the best way. So when we double click an edge, it's gonna do an entire loop. And because we already added additional uh, edges to this design, you can see that it actually goes all the way around the fender. So that's not really gonna work. If we hold down control when we select an edge, we find the other end of that and hold down control and double click, it'll just simply grab the loop in between there. So for example, I can grab here, double click over here, go to modify edit form, and I'm gonna do this in smooth display rather than box display, and just begin to pull it out. And so you can see that it's 20 millimeters, so just shy of an inch. I can hide the edges using control and four. And essentially what we did was we maintained sort of the OEM shape, and we just made it a little bit wider, about an inch, so we can account for wider tires. If we want to go further and be more extreme, obviously we can pull this out. And at some point you might decide, well, let's go out 20 millimeters. And then while we still have this selected, let's do control and double click on a couple more edges since we've moved some of the fender out. And then we can just pull a little bit more out. So once again, we've gone out another inch. So we've made the overall fender almost two inches wider. So the overall car or track width up front is almost four inches wider. So then if we take a look at this, it's very much an OEM look, but we've drastically increased the width of the vehicle just by simply pushing those elements out. Now, of course, if you wanna go even more drastic than that, you can design an over fender. We can add more details or more elements to this design if you want to say, open up the back of the fender and carry all of this back, you can certainly do that. Now, in most cases, it's beneficial to keep the intersection between the door and the hood the same. So that way you don't have to also modify the door or modify other elements. But just for sake of argument, let's go ahead and do a quick save. And let's go a bit more extreme and more drastic. So if we want to pull some of this shape back, so if we want the flare to sort of blend into the door, what we can do is we can select some of these points and we can scale them. So if we take a look at this from the top, I'm going to reset my pivot point right here, and then I'm gonna scale them vertically, which is gonna pull out that all out into essentially a line. I'm gonna do the same thing, moving up to the next set of edges. I'm gonna go ahead and all the way back here. And again, I'm gonna reset my pivot point to whichever point I want to maintain and keep the same, so that, that point on the flare. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these out. And I'm gonna do this a little bit on the next version. However, I'm gonna keep that point at the fender. I wanna, at this point, uh, I only maybe wanna do a side skirt and I wanna keep the door line the same. So I'm gonna to begin to scale this down a little bit. Take a look at it in smooth display. Control four to hide the edges. And you can see what we started to do is we started to sort of widen the fender in the back. If I bring back the original or the OEM, you can kind of see it's very similar shape at the bottom. It just happens to be a little bit wider. And that's potentially a good thing to sort of hide the back of the tire so you're not flinging rocks and all kinds of stuff up on the car and the door. So essentially you just kind of make it a mud flap. And that leads into being able to have maybe a side skirt or some additional design. And again, we've talked about all these sort of elements that we can use to design creases or additional edges into these designs. So we could double click on this edge, insert an edge, and in this case, I'm gonna put it just above. And I'm gonna do the same thing up here. 
insert edge. I'm going to keep it kind of close. And then go ahead and hide the edges. So again, you can see we're kind of building out this sort of new shape where we can build out a side skirt and maybe add some detail to the door. All of this kind of work takes a good bit of time. It's going to take a bit of time to get used to, and you're going to have to play around with manipulating these shapes until you're happy with them. And you're going to have to use tools like insert point and insert edge. So for example, where these come into the fender, if we want to get rid of those creases, we're going to simply bring this forward. I'm going to roll it around, come into here, and I'm going to take, rid of, take that one and get rid of it. I'm going to do the same thing down low. We're going to insert point. I'm going to bring it up and come back and get rid of this one. We are going to go to smooth display. I'm going to go to make uniform. Go back to box and smooth display. Hide my edges. And you can see now we've taken that crease out at the actual fender lip, but we've sort of maintained it back here. So again, we're starting to make a wider body version of this. We're adding some detail that can be carried into the door or a side skirt if we want. And we've, again, we've overall made the entire front of the car about four inches wider. So that's about as far as I want to go with this. Obviously, I could sit here and just tweak and adjust the shape just endlessly. But that should give you enough information on how you could take this design and begin to manipulate it, make it wider, make it more unique. And what I suggest, even if you don't have a Fiat, is just download this data set, play around with the form, and just kind of manipulate it. See what you can do. Add some additional details, maybe make a harder version of certain edges or soften it up if you want, and just have a little bit of fun with it. If you have any questions, please let me know. I don't plan on doing any more with this Fender series, so that's going to be the end of it. But as always, if you have any questions, you can send me an email, support at caducator.com. And as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.